G'day guys, Moose here. Welcome to the metal shop. Today is all about sheet metal. We've already done this guy. If you haven't, I strongly suggest you do. But today we're going to do our more advanced toolbox. Similar kind of processes. It's not much harder other than there's a bit of hardware to add to it. And it makes an awesome gift. Shout out to my little mate Drew. Hand tools, power tools, guillotine, magna bend, toolbox, let's go. If you haven't done it, click all the buttons, the like, subscribes. I don't want you guys to miss out anything. That's it, let's get cracking. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, before we get into it, there's some lessons in the, in the description below for you guys to use that's got plans in them, it's got a lesson procedure for you to follow for the teachers and teachers from home out there and there's a really nice design brief portfolio that the kids can follow. Um, it's simple, easy to do. And teaching point. We use all of our gal here is 600 by 600. It's the perfect size to smash out two, two of the small toolboxes but for this one I get a base and two lids out of the second piece. So, now we're going to move into the marking out. It's up to you if you want to skip it or not, depending on what your marking out skills are like, but I'll go through it in its entirety. So if you need to, skip it. If you don't, follow along. All right, in the plan, this one is the overall dimensions. Obviously, it doesn't have any hardware on it. That's your overall dimensions. That's our lid and the base. Like the other toolbox, I'm going to just draw the outside dimensions first. I'm going to cut off what I don't need on the guillotine on both pieces. I think it's easy to mark out after that. So, this one, the full width is 600 by 420. So, just checking I've got sixes. I'm going to mark off my 420. 420. <clears throat> For the guillotine, to be honest, it only needs that outside edge, that outside edge. It doesn't matter if you have the line the whole way or not. For my lid, the lid is 480 by 300. 300, 300, make sure you hold the ruler nice and tight, and 420, no, thanks Brooke, 480. Once these are marked out, please double check everything before you chop it on the guillotine. Once it's chopped, I can't give you your metal back and your, tool, your toolbox might be a little bit smaller. Right, just gonna double check. 300, 300. 480, 480, yeah that looks good, or 20 by the 6, alright let's jump across to the guillotine. Alright the guillotine. Um, for this project, I'm going to assume you guys have already done the small toolbox, so I don't have to do the big spiel. But the guillotine is amazing, super useful, only if you know what you're doing. So if you're not sure, please get some help from either your teacher or your mum and dad. Uh, let's hook into it. Now don't forget our, don't forget our hot tip from last time. Shift it a little, bend it down.
do the same on this edge. Bend it a little, sorry, snip it a little, bend it down. So that should catch on the edge. Just check. I can see it, you guys can't, but that looks good to me. Chomp. There's one. All right, let's do the base first. Just know that these smaller edges, that one, that one, that one, and that one, they're 10 millimeters. These tabs are 20. And then the sides are 90, 90, 90, and the base as well. The base, please make sure it ends up 220 by 400. Um, so what you're gonna see me do first is do a one centimeter border around the whole thing. Then I'm gonna come in the 90s and then I will check, please make sure you double check, triple check, the two tw you end up with a base 220 by 400. So I'm talking about this rectangle in here. Please make sure it's 220 by 400 and it should be in the center. All right, let's go. Again, if you're awesome at marking out, by all means, you can skip ahead. Centimeter, centimeter. Make sure you're fussy how you hold the ruler. Make sure it's nice, straight, doesn't move on you. So now I want to come in 90. Make sure your 90 is from that one centimetre mark. It's not 90 from the edge, it's 90 from the line you've just drawn. So it's from there. 90. So 90 is the height of the box, of the base I should say. See, we've got 400, perfect. To be honest, this toolbox probably is easier to mark out than the smaller one we did. sure you've heard me say it before as well if you've drawn a line and for some reason your eye thinks something's not quite right um, guarantee you it is your eye is very good at picking up little mistakes so now we're going to draw these um, these tabs these are the tabs are the ones in the corners when it's together how we attach it so they were 20 centimeters sorry 20 millimeters this is when I like to do square Corner, make sure it hits that inner section there. 
That's important, hits the corner. There, not there. Two centimetres. Square it. On the 45. So I've got to lift it up. And I hit that intersection there. Can you still see that, please? Uh, yeah. While you're at it, you know you're going well if that line intersects through that one as well. So I should have done that the first line. Where does it slide on the table? So double check everything. 220, 220, 400, 400. So make sure everything's perfect before you move on. If you're ever unsure, sometimes I make the kids at school actually do it on paper first. So, lid, same idea. That's a centimetre, 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 centimetre. This time, instead of 90, the lid is 30. So it's 30 there, 30 there, 30 from there to there. So our base, our centre um, rectangle has to be, again, 400 by 220. They have to be the same. Oh, your lid just won't match the base. So, let's go. I reckon I might let you guys rock out to this while I mark it out.
I thought I taught you to use the magnet band yet. Uh, right. Make sure it's there. Don't need tricky bit with this one. These kids chop off the wrong corner. Yeah. It's that one we keep, so that one's out. Well, because it is the same size. So all of that comes off. If you need to, I'm a fan of scribbling out what I want to get rid of. It's obvious on the big corners, not so much on the little corners. So make sure the tab you're keeping is here, is on the edge of the long one. I want this one, not that one. It's confusing because they're the actual same size once they're marked out. So, now, I won't film it, but I'm going to the guillotine because I'm going to chop off the corners because I can. I can get rid of as much as I can on the guillotine, then I've only got a little bit to use with the tin snips. I'll be back in a second. Snips. These are my favourite. I like it because I get extra kind of reach with them, which works really well on the bigger one. These are good when I've got to do small stuff. I find them easy to use and nice and accurate. For the, oh, just for a heads up, you can get left hand, right handed versions as well. So if you're kind of working away and you're a left-handed guy or girl, um, you might need to grab a specific pair just for you. So, My only hot tip with the tin snips is, please make sure you're cutting out what you can, sorry, what you, can, what you need. And re it's really important that the tip goes right into the corner. With all of our um, sheet metal work, we need really clean corners, so be real fussy with that bit. It's got to be super clean there. I'm not allowed to have it a little bit short or a little bit daggy. I'm not allowed to have a little blob there, so it's got to be nice and accurate. So, be fussy with that part. You took your time marking out, so take your time with the tin sticks. Oh, and be real careful that you line it up perfect. Because once you've kind of lined it up, if I cut it a little bit off where I want to go, you can't fix it. They're not like scissors. So. Alright, you guys can rock out again and I'll finish this off. Alright, 
perfect so far. If you've gotten to this point and, so I should have mentioned it earlier, didn't need some metho to get rid of your texture, well done, awesome job. So they're perfect so far. And now we head to the magna bend, the fun stuff. All right, let's go. All right, you know the drill. <laughs> Dad joke time. What are all the tools in your toolbox afraid of? The vamp pliers. <laughs> Wait, it gets worse. <laughs> the other day, I heard some frogs in my toolbox. Guess what sound they were making? <laughs> drill bit, drill bit. <laughs> All right, break the gags. <laughs> it must be smoko time, let's go. All right, this time we're doing it a smidge different. So instead of on the small toolbox, all our safety edges were folded down and flat, these ones, the ones that are one centimetre wide, we fold them to 90 degrees. We want them to be nice and flat like that. So it gives us a surface for the lid to close down. So, uh, the concept's the same, the idea's the same. I'll let you guys rock out, because I'll assume you guys know how to use the Magna Bend now. So, let's go. Now the hot tip is we want to fold the ends up, sorry, the sides up. We have to make sure the tabs end up inside the wall. So at the moment if I was going to do it, they would crash into each other. So all you simply do is grab your um, van pliers <laughs> and give them a little tweak. Just to make sure, you only need to tweak the start to make sure it's going to flow inside. And you'll do the same to the lid. This time you line it up exactly like you normally do, but make sure there's a little gap inside the wall so the tabs can actually go in. They fold inside, but they don't hit your, um, your uh, metal bars. Uh, metal plates. Take it nice and slow so you can watch, making sure it goes in. Okay, bro, you're up. Teaching moment. Be careful where you leave your off cuts. Off cuts. Your off cuts of the plates because they get in the way and you can't bend. And we've got a tiny one out that's a tiny bit out. And it's easier to fix now than afterwards. All right, now we're up to the good bit. We're going to attach our pieces together. Uh, it's going to be an intro to some hardware for you guys, some hand tools, and in, in, in particular, the cordless drill. If you're new to the cordless drill, please check out my video. Uh, it's got some safety tips and just some basic how-to, um, so you can use it correctly, keep yourself out of trouble. Um, all right, let's get into it. 
All right, because I'm a little bit special and awesome, I actually want my rivets to be uniform in the same spot. So I will actually mark out where I want them to go. So hold the sides where you want them. Give yourself a mark. You should be coming in about a centimetre. Same when we do the lid. And work out where you want the two actual rivets to go. I'll do the same to the lid when we get to it. Last project we did, I introduced you guys to the standard vice grips. If you can, an excuse, good excuse to go buy some more kit is grab these ones. They're same vice grips. Um, we actually use them a fair bit when we do welding, but they're really good because I've got a bit more depth of reach. Works well, works well to get around the safety edges. Same deal. To the side where you want it, clamp it, make sure it's nice and neat. I'm gonna drill that one put a rivet in that I will have to actually unclamp it and drill the next two. So Brock and I might work together and you guys can rock out. Again, remember the hot tip with the drill. You want to work close to your body and make sure you're nice and upright. That's the key, so you get a bit of strength behind it. All right, you guys rock out. Hardware-wise here at school, you can get whatever hardware you want. This is what works well for us. We use piano hinges. We just buy a roll of it, and you cut it at any size you need. Um, piano hinge works well. The catches we use on the front, this is a two-piece setup we use. Uh, nice and easy, everything just riveted on, um, and it's easy to line up and sort out. And the handles. Three piece. Again, these are just riveted on. Make sure it's centered. My only hot tip is don't do it too tight and please don't do it too loose. Um, I think that's it. We'll get into the mark now. So, easiest way to do it is give yourself a center line. That's the middle. <clears throat> so I normally set it up, give it a little bit of movement, and we'll measure from center to center of the holes. So it's about 13. So if I go 13, Then find the center of the 270 left over, 135. That should be where my first one's going to go. So it's 135, 135. So this is where we should end up. Out there. About there. So that looks good to me. Let's go for it. There you go. That's going to work perfect. So I can put that to one side. Now I want to do the hinge. My only tip with the piano hinge, sorry, there's more than one. Put your box together and see if there's a, if you've got a bigger gap, front or back for any reason. 
have a little look. If one of them's got a bigger gap, this one's not too bad. But for any reason, if one's got a bigger gap, because maybe these aren't perfect flush, or they're not perfect flush, if one of them does have the bigger back, put your piano hinge on that side. So this is pretty good, so I might put it there anyway. So, we want our piano hinge to be in the center. I'm gonna give myself a mark. So in the center, it's gonna be about there. And we want the barrel to be hard up against that edge. So when you attach it, make sure it looks it's like that, the barrel's hard up against the edge. Not on top of it, I want it against the edge. Brock, you can help me with this one. Now attaching the lid. If you've got a nicer front edge for any reason, Make sure that one's at the front. Make sure you align it left and right so it fits nice on the corners. And same deal, we want the barrel to be against the edge. My hot tip with this one is I would put in two only and then check that you like it. And like all our projects, everything's pretty good to do. Do it in pairs with a mate. All right, maybe my last tip is we're gonna put a center line on here to help us line up where our, our latch goes. But I find it easier, maybe an excuse to buy more kit, is clamp it. Make sure you clamp it. Make sure you like your left and right setup. If you need to, you can tweak it a tiny bit now. So, center line. Text it. Text it. For my guys at school, when, you, when we use this one in particular, have it so the top part of it is as low as it can go. Line it up where you want, as low as it can go, about there. Give yourself a couple marks. So I'm gonna drill that one first, we'll attach it. Cracking job guys, awesome. So with a bit of luck, you've got yourself an awesome toolbox that's gonna to last forever, make great gifts as well. You learnt some new skills, and most important, you got some new tools. Um, you can't have enough. All you need is tools and time, and you can do anything. Uh, please make sure you click the like, subscribes, um, spread the word about Sawdust and Chrome, it means the world to me and my family. Um, I think that's it. Get out of here, peace and love. Is this all right? That's as good as you get, mate. <laughs> all right, test. All right, a couple points. I've pro provided, sorry. <laughs> oh wait, I want to do a gag. All right, 
<laughs> no way. All right, you know the drill. Oh, that doesn't work, it's a drill bit. <laughs> Stop it. All right, let's go. Nah, I didn't like that. Just a few pointers to kind of 